What an epic win from Virtus Pro, our new Flashpoint champions. As a reminder, guys, Virtus Pro, as Hawka mentioned, they came through our qualifier. But not only that, they didn't drop a map in our qualifier. So they cruised straight into Flashpoint. And you know what? In Flashpoint, they never even touched the loser's bracket. The one time they lost, it was in the winner's final of their group against OG. And is there a more legitimate result that you can imagine? Never touching the loser's bracket, beating the turn all of the tournament favorites, getting revenge against OG in the finals, beating Big, beating Fnatic. This is such a complete victory for Virtus Pro as a team. Has your opinion of them changed, Thorin, throughout the course of this tournament? Yeah, of course. I mean, you have to remember when they made that run through the qualifier, obviously those were mainly tier two and tier three teams. Those were names where like, for example, North was a team we would have been excited to get in. Like actually when you got Virtus Pro, because their form had been so bad in the months prior, you thought, right, well, this was just a crapshoot of a qualifier. What are they going to do? But in the group you already saw, aside from the first time they played OG, it's the way that they matched up with every other team was so impressive to me. Like the maps that they were able to get wins on, the fact that, I mean, the, the cast has even harped on it if you have three players in your team who individually take the time to study demos this is what's possible it doesn't matter that you don't have the best players in the world you can get little key pieces of detail on where the other person's going to play who you're going to attack there or maybe who's rotating into a site like that that can end up getting you one or two extra rounds and for me it's the grind out nature of vp that was so impressive and Maui, you were the one who predicted VP coming in to win this, and you had only seen like those those CIS tournaments, although to be fair, they did beat Navi a couple of times at IEM New York CIS, and you had seen some of their qualifier matches coming in. What were the aspects of this team that made you so confident that they would be our champions? I, I just feel like VP never choke. They play CS in a way that when we're in the green room or just talking amongst each other, we always say, why is this team force buying right here? Why is this team playing like just throwing their guns away? Why don't they save? And VP, they always play the odds. They always play the numbers game and they play for the long haul in every match. And that's why they don't choke. Uh, this game was getting really ropey, and there were a couple moments where it felt like, okay, this might be it. OG might be back in this one. They might send it to OT, but VP just give themselves so many chances to have wins. They always try to outline a win condition in a round, and they always try to make it so that they have a chance to win the gun rounds. They, they know that their gun round plan is where they thrive, where they succeed the most, and they have such a complete picture in every single round. You know, it took a while for Inferno to get going, and it really was kind of a story of fiscal responsibility here. And Thorin, you were calling out OG a little bit on their CT side because they saved quite a bit. Was that overly passive, do you think? Is that what screwed them over in this third and final map of Flashpoint 2? Yes, because initially it was a sound strategy because they were going for this style where clearly they've been in the demos and they thought what we're going to do is because we have a fairly passive CT side normally, let's not just spread out and let them pick us apart from the demos. Let's just do gamble stacks. Let's basically do what Mad Lions did on train in that first match of the upper bracket playoffs so they tried to do that now the problem was that was the logic of repeatedly savings to again have the full buy and to gamble the problem is this almost all the gambles were wrong their feel was absolutely terrible like alexi b's feel for when they rotate was only on the second half of the game in the first half really really poor and the problem with this is exactly this is what i always tell teams that do too many saves that those will be the moments you look back at after the game if you lose and say i wish i had those rounds back again i'd even just try a couple of straight up rounds i'd try an aggressive round because the problem is this this. If you look at the normal OGCT side, I understand why they did it. I think they actually would have been picked apart. But the, the answer is obvious. I hope they go back and watch this demo. What you have to do is make some information players on air. You were never keeping anyone honest over at the balcony. You, you barely ever even peeked down mid. You didn't have a clue if anyone was go if they were waiting to come in, if they were going to be. And so as a result, the rare times they gambled the B stack, unfortunately, that's when VP almost never went there. And then the times that they had a B stack and it was a full execute A, they had to save before they could even have a gunfight so even though i understand what they were going for the timing was totally off and they're going to look back especially with how close this game got at the end and just think what if we had even two more rounds and maui what was it that got 
uh, OG back into this game because it looked really grim at the half. But And yet they managed to almost scrape their way back into it and push it to overtime. Uh, I got to give credit to Alexi B. It felt like in the mid round, he was making some excellent calls, excellent reads. I don't even know how he had the information on the T side of time. So it probably was a couple lucky guesses as well, but they were hitting the bomb sites consistently that Virtus Pro were not stacking. Uh, and even the one time that Virtus Pro had all five of their players rotated onto A and they had weapons, they, they still managed to pull through. So you got to give a lot of credit to just every member on OG who was finding frags in those kinds of rounds because there were several moments where they were all coming up lane side, porch side, whatever you want to call it, and they were just busting their way out. Just It's like they're... It DP scary. is locking... <laughs> yeah, they're putting down a solid brick wall and... Alexi B and crew are just Kool-Aid guys smashing right through it. I just it's crazy <laughs> how they how they could even find any openings in those kind of things because it, you were just throwing yourself into the the meat grinder that Virtus Pro had set up there but just finding the entry. So credit to OG for making it such a close game because they had some very tough rounds that they had to play themselves out of. I've got a stat for you Monty that is crazy. Literally, oh, yeah? the highest rated Virtus Pro player is Jim, and he was like the 16th highest player in yep. the entire tournament. So that shows this is a team that did it with their brains. They did it with teamwork, positioning, preparation. Like I say, they're actually a great role model, especially for their region, which is known to play fairly just yes. press W slash brainless counter strike. So this is how you actually win if you want to beat the European teams. Yeah, absolutely. Coming into this final today, it was number 15 for Jame and number 23 for Yakindar. And those were the two highest rated players, according to those HLTV ratings. Before we get some more analysis done, guys, we do need to hear from our Flashpoint 2 champions. And we have that number 23, the young gun Yakindar with Freya right now. An incredible performance from Virtus Pro to cement themselves as the Flashpoint 2 champions, taking home that trophy and, of course, Yakinda, half a million dollars in prize money. Can you just describe how you and the team are feeling right now? Yeah, I mean, like, the team was really happy, but I'm literally shaking because this is actually my first, like, f fucking big event, and I just couldn't believe the... Like, well, I mean, we, we know we're strong. I know, I know we're a good team. I know it's possible, but... Uh, still after you've done it it's still unbelievable yeah an absolutely incredible achievement from you guys and no easy way through either you took down some of the favorites in the entire competition then coming up against og yet again how did you manage to claim revenge uh, for that last loss you had uh, at the group stage of flashpoint 2 <clears throat> well i mean like we played inferno previously against uh, against them on group stage uh, and we knew what's up why the, why we lost that game so we just uh, focused on dealing the mistakes during the tournament and um, that's why we want Inferno today. On Mirage it was just unlucky a bit. Uh, my individual game didn't step up there but like Train was awesome as well. So I mean we just did our mis fixed our mistakes on Inferno and that in the end got us the win. As the desk were alluding to as well, uh, your T side of Inferno was absolutely incredible to witness. Who, who was making those calls during that period? Was it a group effort? Was it Jame uh, making those reads? Uh, Jame and Kicker mostly. There are two, like Jame, Jame obviously, like uh, maintaining the momentum with the full on ma macro of the calls, and uh, Kicker just focusing on Banana, how to win Banana, and it all worked. It worked perfectly. It was crazy as well because it looked like OG were almost going to be coming back into it uh, later in that second half. So, was that kind of a key turning point for you guys? Uh, were you managed to be closing it out there? <laughs> I guess, we, yeah. Uh, we guessed wrongly again on the last round as well. Jane was alone on A side. I, I'm not sure how OG didn't kill him, but I don't know. It's just you have to be lucky to win a tournament like this. So I guess that's that's the round that we're that we got really lucky on. And speaking of the overall tournament as well, I know when you guys were coming into it, you were saying that this was your opportunity to kind of prove yourselves against the European competition. So how are you viewing yourselves now, particularly as, you know, you came through the qualifiers for this very event? Well, I mean, at the start, it was uh, pretty heavily, uh, pretty heavy against, for example, we played OG and Fury on the on different tournaments. And... Um, it was hard to adapt at start, but now we're slowly starting adapt adapting, especially after the win against Big Fnatic and OG now. Um, this is amazing. I think uh, we can finish top 10 this year. 
And what are your thoughts on your overall performance as well? I know we've been talking throughout the entire tournament and you've been saying, you know, you've been lacking confidence in some areas as well. Does this sort of solidify for you going forward that confidence in your own ability? Well, I mean, this is not my best tournament that uh, will be. And uh, I'm really sure about that. But I did everything for my team. I did I did my role and um, I'm glad we won. And uh, just in the future, I'm going to be playing better. Just know it. So. Of course, but it's a perfect today, place. Today, today was actually fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, you had a spectacular performance, particularly as you were saying, on that second map as well. And just looking behind you as well, the perfect place for the Flashpoint 2 trophy, potentially amongst all your other ones there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to ask maybe. you as well about just anything you wanted to say to the fans too, because we've seen them supporting yeah. you throughout your entire time here at Flashpoint 2. So have a moment to say anything to the viewers watching at home. Well, mostly thanks to Virtus Pro, our organization, fucking amazing. Jane for our in-game leader. All the th all the players are fucking awesome, and the fans. You're the best of this all fucking part of the tournament. I fucking love every one of you. Sorry for swearing, but I'm just really emotional right now. So I uh, I love you. I love you guys. It's fine, you kid. It's totally fine. We love the emotion here at Flashpoint. And massive congratulations once again on cementing your place as the Flashpoint Two champions. And with that, we can throw it back over to a proud dad over on the desk. <laughs> a proud dad indeed oh, maui God. snake just the paternal glow about him right now is is just dazzling to behold wouldn't you say are you proud of you kindar i'm proud of you kindar but i'm, I'm not his father J jame jame might hold that title i mean i i'm just happy that aggressive cs is back it, it is taking every region by storm right now, whether it's FURIA in North America, VP in, in Europe, and now CIS as well. Seeing players designated to be the point man to such a strong degree is just, it's such a fun way to watch CS, to know that this guy is gonna be in the fray every single time and that they'll ride or die for him. So I love I love what VP brought to the table in terms of their total game theory and the way you kinder played on top of it. Now, as we look forward uh, to where VP stands at the end of this year, I'm going to ask you, Thorin, the creator of the top 10 list. D is this going to be a strong move for VP into the top 10, do you think? I think it's plausible if, when you consider, like, I personally count, like, what wins you get as well, not just where you place in a tournament. So, I mean, listen, beating, like, three of the top, I think I think Fnatic was in the top 12 or 13, I think. So there's three of the top 12 teams in the world. That's pretty good. The issue is this. Basically, they were dormant this year until, basically, the qualifier of Flashpoint 2. So it's almost sure. like some, like, miracle Cinderella run at the end of the year. So I don't know how they did it. Hope, hopefully they can continue so we actually get another quality team out of that region. And it's not just Na'Vi plus the rest. But I don't really know that we can put them high. Like I'm thinking like around 10 or 11 is probably where they realistically are. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. And as we take a look back before we get into the meat of the blind spot, as it were, and a little bit of fun stuff as we head and wind down our show, uh, what are your guys' takeaways, Maui? What have you enjoyed about Flashpoint? What is this helped you realize about the current landscape of the competitive Counter-Strike scene? Hmm. I think that even though online CS gets a bad rep for maybe being a little bit too casual, uh, you can see that in these high pressure moments in these finals, when there's a lot of money on the line, it does affect the players. It, it, there's absolutely the nerves coming out in games like this. And you can see that the level of prep that some of these teams brought to this tournament was elevated from what I will see at a, you know, 150k prize pool tournament with 24 teams. I, I it, it's really exciting when there's something that they're playing for and they know that they're playing for. You can see that the level of play does change drastically. So it's not just everyday Counter Strike over here at Flashpoint. It's it's a million dollar prize purse for God's sake. <laughs> Must be a little surreal, though, trying to play for a million dollars in the comfort of your own home. That level of pressure is normally accompanied by stadiums and crowds. And while we hope to have that again, uh, it's all in your mind, which is a very interesting conundrum to be in. It's Thorin, going to be hard to fall asleep in that same room. <laughs> <I'll say that. laughs> yeah, it is. Just try to turn Even around and fall asleep. <laughs> Especially with his LED dragon ceiling, you know, that makes it actually very difficult to fall asleep in that room. Thorne, do you have any big takeaways from Flashpoint? How has this changed your view of CSGO towards the end of this year? 
I mean, I will say, I think that actually the the money angle was the only way we could bring some sort of gravitas back to online play because unfortunately, not only are the prize pools reduced, understandably, because tournaments have split across all these regions and so you can't have everyone compete in one place aside from this little spurt we had towards the end of the year. The problem is they did all blur into one and eventually it sort of felt like even if someone won one, the next day another tournament began and they never really got even the feeling of like after the Super Bowl, people have those weeks where they're so it in you're reminiscing on it no you were straight on to the next one and so sometimes unless basically you won two tournaments in a row you never really even got much of a pop and that's why we had those teams like number one was being swapped like little pokemon cards back in the day or something so <laughs> i think personally i just found it was kind of cool to let the tournament breathe also Whereas we had like a like I think OG played ten best of threes, but th look at the prize money they were competing for again. I don't sure. feel hard done by that they had to play that many best of threes because if they'd have won, they'd have bloody earned that half a million dollars. It's when someone <laughs> does all that and at the end they get thirty thousand. Like that feels a little bit cheap, you know, especially when you're used to competing in the biggest lands in the world for well, millions of dollars beating the same teams. To be fair, they got twenty five thousand dollars per best of three that they played. And they didn't even win the finals, <laughs> right? So Sure. <laughs> so and I also think actually everyone. Here at Flashpoint, one thing I really appreciate, despite the circumstances of how the tournament ended, was look at the blend of talent we were able to bring together. It was the lineup no one's ever seen before. Like we had Anderson Semler, the legends of the game. Always a pleasure to hear them cast. I think Hawker probably showed people when you can actually hear him because he's not on the B stream. He's a pretty good caster. Bardolf was just his usual self. You, the same humor, the same lies about how you should play, clearly based on his own matchmaking experiences. Monty <laughs> Hayes still learning the game, getting into CS, trying to bring some of the flavor that he had when he used to be a caster over in League of Legends. I think Freya and Potter, obviously, they're usually more on the DreamHack circuit when they get to colour outside the lines a little bit. You've seen probably a different side from them. Shout out to Freya for actually risking all of her jobs elsewhere in the industry by doing that news reading <laughs> segment. I thought Potter actually did a great job. Actually, here's the joke. I'm going to let everyone in on it. Obviously, she is really nice and she almost never would do any of that stuff in those skits, which is why it was funny. It was called a juxtaposition. You couldn't even spell juxtaposition. Sit the fuck down. So no, I think also I'll, t I'll shout out Hawker. Uh, no, sorry, not Hawker. Alan. Someone people probably didn't know because he's never done an event on camera as an analyst. But, I mean, just look at the work he did from the first match to even, like, the fifth match. I think I saw the guy get about 50% better each match. It was ridiculous. And by the end, you could have believed he was on any tournament. Maui here, obviously, taking his first step up. He's doing the final of a big event. This has basically been the big year that's launched him. And he even got to call the team that won the tournament in the end and have, have all the analysis go his way in the upper bracket and win the prediction contest, usually reserved for the interview girls I've known. Noticed. So fair enough. Enjoy that one, mate. You're not in the most glittering company, ever, but you did win. So fair enough. And then obviously I was here, and I'm good. Yeah. You were great. You were great coming up with some of those skits. Also, Yumi helping out with the telestration, getting a couple casts in there, and breaking into. I think Yumi, uh, yes. if I'm correct, his his biggest uh, contribution to date was a like 12th place decider match, I believe. And so now he had some real matches to cast here, and it's a pleasure to work with him. So yeah, oh, thank by the you way, guys just all. Just to reference on camera, also Tom Newman, who did the actual like work on those skits, like without him, basically, those skits would be like 50% as good. Like he knew how to shoot yes. them, how to adjust the idea, how to tell people how to act. Believe it or not, Anders actually can't on his own act that disturbed. Like he actually needs prompting to do that on camera. Apparently you need a <laughs> candid camera to get him doing that normally. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, also yeah. I, I and can't also... strip that well, guys. That's That was all Tom. Tom was giving me all the stage directions <laughs> there. He's, a, he's my pimp, yeah, all... actually. Yeah. Also to shout out to all of our producers, Reese, Mike, uh, and, uh, you know, Andrew, our technical broadcast director, because all of the changes, especially in the last couple of days that have been so difficult to pull off while we moved into our rooms, obviously not the way we wanted to end the tournament, but still super, super hard for our crew to do, who are also working from their rooms right now, remoting into all of the equipment. So thank you so much to everybody for that. We put on a great tournament overall it's uh, too bad we couldn't end it in our beautiful studio but it's a testament to everybody's work over the past couple of days that's actually managed to have this thing finish at all so really appreciate that we are going to be going into a little bit more of a relaxed time now we've got some secret santa gifts from people to come up we also are going to go over our pinnacle points so we have had three weeks of this thank you very much to pinnacle for sponsoring flashpoint it was actually really fun and really different to do our i won't say predictions our our <laughs> wagering segments this way because they weren't always who we thought was going to win but it did create a really fun game that i think we all enjoyed and i think we should have all of our 
our pinnacle segments up here. So I think we're going to start with the first week of our group stage because we did it week by week and we had different winners. And our first winner was James Bardolph. Mao, you had a really good run in the old pinnacle points. I actually added everything together and I was 4,000 higher than second place. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of killed it. I kind of honestly <laughs> killed it. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of slayed this comp competition when betting's involved. I take it way more seriously. <laughs> well, especially because if you guys don't know, we did have some of these punishments. Semler became the clown after our first week of competition. Thorne, you became and I, the seventh cloud the nine clown. Exactly. So there was Henry G in the, in the five players. I mean, I guess I'll let Kassad off on that one. It was his first game. But then Semler had to be the clown. Yeah, I skipped the door. Thanks to OG, by the way, who didn't win the tournament. But if you hadn't won that match, I'd have been in that clown costume. And if you know anything about me, listen, I'll do a lot of funny things on camera, but like, don't know, I might have had to skip out the back door on that one. I'm not, I was never getting in that clown costume. You have to understand. You have to understand. <laughs> Thorin, you know, I would have gotten in the clown costume with you if that had happened. I I, I promised Potter okay. that that was going to be the case. All right, we do right, have I'll our see. next week of competition as well. And this one, oh, this is our this is our next week of competition. So Anders on top there, Haka, similar, and then me. I had a better time, Thorin. You had a better showing. Maui, what tripped you up in this one? I think this was. Um... Forza doing way worse than I expected, yes. and Dignitas actually winning yeah. a BO3. <laughs> I think those were my big bets that went south on this week. But at the end of it all, I I think we'll we'll go to the next slide soon, and you'll see that I still. <laughs> once I get the data, once I get the download, I'm like Alexi B with it. I just download these teams, and I just I just <laughs> rattle it off after that. I think you're like Alexi B on CT side. You just gambled all the time, but you got you got it right this time. Let's see. That was that was week two with Envy and Forza. Okay, that was Envy right, and, right, and, right. and Forza. I had I to like gamble how... a lot. Sure. I like how Bardolph went from top to bottom. Bar we did make Bardolph do stupid Star Wars dances yeah. on Just the like green screen. We did get some <laughs> That is a very interesting kink that he has. <laughs> uh, we did get some great photoshops out of it, though. So thank you guys for submitting all of those. And now, before you know, we we did finish up our predictions yesterday. We were supposed to have six people do like a musical number, and I'm really sad because. We had people here who are working really hard on that to develop the music and the lyrics. Uh, so Liam and Amira, I'm really sorry we didn't get to do that. Would have been really funny and a, a great send off to the show. But we are going to have some interviews instead with our winners or gloating, I should say. It's probably just <laughs> gloating. So we do have Freya. We do have Freya who came in third place in our playoffs pinnacle points prediction I did. contest. Congratulations. Thank you, Monty. And thank you, you Susie, for the trophy, trophy as well. And thank you, Liam, for the sweets inside it too. An extra <laughs> nice surprise. Um, yeah, the big dick play paid off. I bet on OG and I bet on MIBR. I was way down at the bottom. I was in, uh, definitely going to be in the musical, but nope third place coming in so thank you uh, to the Brazilians <laughs> and OG who didn't actually ultimately end up winning, but save my predictions to say the least. Well, thank you, Freya. I am really salty, by the way, that we didn't have... We're not supposed to have winners in these competitions. We're only supposed to have losers. Yes, That's the way the it's point. supposed to fucking go. <laughs> so I am salty that we had to finish this way, but you do get paper trophies uh, that my wife Susie made today. <laughs> All right, so in second place, we do have Mr. James Bardolph, who went from first to last to second again. Do you have a beautiful silver trophy for us? I'm very impressed by this. This is awesome. So props to Susie. I was just like very taken with how symmetrical the handles are. That's very, very impressive. And yeah, I had to have to allow the plebs to do something that second week, right? Have some fun. Let's put some big money on Dignitas. But, you know, I had to come back to crush it. First and second, I don't mind that, man. Me and Maui, like Ferraris in the Formula One. Yeah, one, the one-two setup. So it's all good. I didn't mind losing to Maui. It's a good race. Um, so congratulations to you. And yeah, I love my trophy. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't look sexual at all anyway uh thank you very much james for your wonderful casting of our finals tonight and finally Mao, you're already here so would you like to do your gloating because apparently you've already done the math on your entire pinnacle point one so you're also our overall winner so you get double the trophies i, get, theory, I should get in practice you only get because one. i also i think bird is pro <laughs> From day zero, <laughs> I actually I picked the I picked the winner of this tournament before I think it Yumi started. Did too. I think Yumi did too. Yes, yes. Where's Yumi actually trophy? was third. Yumi was third. My trophy is right here. Thank you, Susie, so much for this. Um, she also delivered some uh, a beer for me too. So thank you, Susie, and cheers to you. Cheers. Uh, thanks to everybody. We can't have a blind spot today, but 
remember guys, the main thing I want to say while I have this time up here on stage is that, what is this? Yep. This Maui, your, Curtis that's your prediction. Pro. Yep. That's day one. Day, day one, you, you kinder fan. It's the proof it is, of your that, genius, That is Maui. the proof. Exactly. <laughs> so, but the, but the main thing I have to say is make sure you pour the beer straight down so it gets that head. Don't get the bubbles in your stomach. Get at the top of your beer. Oh, God. Cheers. What an animal you are. Tilt your glass, please, as you pour your beers, guys. Don't be like Maui. Don't be like he's going to chuck it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, congratulations on your pinnacle point victory and your beautiful golden trophy. We had to do everything a little bit scuffed today. But with that said, guys, we also had a little bit of fun getting secret Santa gifts for each other. As a parting note here at Flashpoint, we can't do our normal blind spot, but we do have a fun little segment for you guys. Goodbye from Flashpoint. We've had an amazing time throughout these playoffs so far, and I hope you guys have a nice holiday. We'll get it kicked off with this. All right, here's my gift. Wow, is it already an early Christmas morning? Merry Christmas, everybody. Since we're all isolating in our rooms now, uh, we got our presents brought to us to our rooms, and we're gonna get to open up some presents. A gift from Secret Santa. Ooh, exciting. I have no idea who this is from. I have no idea what to expect. No idea who's bought this for me. So it's gonna be a wild ride. Here's the boy. I wonder what my secret Santa has gotten me. Card has a message. It says, I just want your voice to be heard from secret Santa, but that looks like it's printed though. So we'll find out if that's actually related to the message at all. Two bottle from secret Santa. Okay. I do wonder if most people open their gifts nicely or if they just rip it open like me. It's a book. The spiritual... Oh my god, what is this? A wooden tomahawk. Ooh, somebody knows me very well. It's a small bottle of Talisker, one of my favorite scotches. The spiritual journey of Alejandro Jodorowsky. It's more Star Wars themed shit, and I love it. A little LED R2D2. Ooh. Mine. Marvelous. Right, apparently it's a megaphone. Metaphorical for my career because I indeed have the megaphone. No way. Oh, that's sick. Grow your own indoor herb garden set. That's sick. <laughs> this is amazing this is my first tweet oh my god how did they do this so fast Ooh, two books in fact the first one we've got is the stars my destination um and the second one is a novel by patrick o'brien called master and commander cold steel <laughs> But I swear, guys, I'm not casting Valorant. <laughs> An interesting one. That picture of me on the banana is taken, <laughs> it's taken in Iron Apple, and then edited me into the old fountain on Inferno. So, who do I think got this for me? <sighs> I don't know who could have given this to me. God, it could be, it's either Monty, okay, it's either Monty, Thorin, or somewhere, and I'll just go with, I think it's, I think it's Thorin. I'm gonna guess one of the new people, like Hako or Alan. Maybe like Maui or somebody? Maui might have, uh, might have hooked me up with this. So, I don't really know who I can guess who this would be from. Maybe do Potter. Maybe she thinks that that's an appropriate gift for me. I'm gonna say, I feel like this is a, this is a Maui move. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Yumi for this one. Um, I think that may be that may be Semler. That's who I go with. Maybe James Bottle. Big Hawker. It's a blind stab in the dark. I have no idea. Maybe someone who doesn't know me at all, but no idea. 
And well, I'm going to take this time real quick to just say thank you to everybody who's been tuning in and following throughout the year and giving us support. And Merry Christmas to everybody out there. It's a fantastic time of the year. Let's be grateful um, that we've still got some great CS, that we've had CS all year long, and that we've been able to really, you know, kick ass and take names. So big shout out to everybody in the CSGO community and to the esports community at, at large. And Merry Christmas, everybody. Let's end strong. Gotta walk through the fire for what's important